so many things can go wrong when you get a breast augmentation, when you get any kind of plastic surgery. I was taking quite a lot of uh, prescription medication. And me and Skylar called them Franken boobs. I mean, not right away because I would have burst into tears. Hello, beautiful human beings. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Aveda. I make all kinds of videos about all kinds of things. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. This is part two of my boob vlog series, my breast augmentation series. If you haven't already, I strongly suggest watching part one just so that you can kind of get a background about what these videos are all about. And there's some good information, I, I believe, in the first one. So in these videos, I wanted to go into more detail about the actual surgery itself. I do feel in a lot of the, the research that I did before I got my boob job that there was not a lot of videos out there, not a lot of vloggers or people that were willing to share kind of the not so <laughs> exciting, fun, glamorous side of the surgery itself. As you know, if you've watched the, the first one and I'll fill you in now here, I recorded a bunch of video three over three years ago when I had my surgery initially done. So the footage isn't the best, but it is from real time and I think it's important that I show it to you because it's obviously me speaking in a real honest place. So what, in this video, basically what I'm gonna do is show you some of that footage from three years ago when I was getting my surgery done and kind of comment a bit now about where I am now and share with you basically day one, day two of post-op all the way to one month, two months, three months post-op. We're gonna jump right into day two, I believe, right after I got the surgery. I do not know how people do this on their own. Luckily, I had Skylar with me to support me and help me with everything. It's just, it's very scary because you literally have just inserted these bags of chemicals into your body and then zipped up and then sent on your way with a bunch of um, prescription medication and kind of just given a piece of paper about what the healing process is gonna be like and it's, it's a little terrifying. So I'm gonna show you that footage right now, day two, just hanging out in my bed and what was kind of going through my mind at that time. This is day two. My surgery ended up being at 9.30 in the morning. And then I hung out in the recovery from about 10.30 to 12.30, which was really torturous because I just wanted to go, but they wanted to keep an eye on me. Pretty much as soon as it was done, like I, my whole perspective changed and I'm super excited and happy and glad that I did it. And for to show anyone, I'm almost like excited for people to see and like, I just think it's gonna look great and how can anybody have a negative reaction when it's something that's gonna make me so happy so that's all shifted thank goodness because it was very stressful leading up to this day I have my phone scheduled so every like couple hours I'm on some pill schedule and painkillers and in terms of pain I am on constant painkillers so I can't really say how bad it is um, when it starts to get towards the end of a cycle, I can really feel um, my chest and the pressure and the, it's like heat and it's like aching and, you know, and I had quite a developed chest muscular region. So that's been the hardest thing, I think. Um, it hurts to move my arms or lift them. Uh, this guy's had to help me, like... <laughs> walk to the bathroom, get out of bed, like everything, because I can't really use my upper body right now. Haven't moved from bed without assistance, so that's kind of where I'm at today is I can't do anything yet. Um, Skylar brushed my teeth this morning for me, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I feel very lucky. I don't know how people do it that don't have someone to take care of them, so I'm just, I know I'm very lucky that way. So yeah, I'm just kind of hoping Tomorrow is even better than today, and closer to the weekend, I can get back to doing some normal things. But so far, I feel good, and that's it. So I'll check in, and maybe tomorrow. If you didn't catch um, what I mentioned quite often in that video, is that I was taking quite a lot of uh, prescription medication. My spirits definitely seemed up. 
Previous to my surgery, I was extremely nervous, stressed, had a lot of anxiety, and wasn't sure how I felt about um, actually going under the knife. Post-op, day two, sitting in bed on tons of medication, I felt awesome. I would like to thank T3s and Oxycodone for my change in spirits. Definitely those pain meds had a lot to do with how I felt in that first few days. I don't know about you and how you respond to taking things like Tylenol 3s and Oxycodone, but it definitely aided in my anxiety and actually was quite challenging throughout the rest of my post-op to wean myself off of those drugs because I found as soon as I had taken a break from those pills, reality sunk in, my actual anxiety crept back in, and my feelings about what I was going through and how I looked crept back in. So now we're going to jump into just, I think several days later, um, and me kind of struggling to get myself off of that medication and actually feeling very shocked at the amount of pain that I was in and the discomfort. Because I'm someone that's worked out for a long, long time, um, and if you're someone like me that's worked out in a gym or played sports who's an athlete and you're considering doing the surgery, it's gonna be a lot worse for you than it will be for someone who has never you know, really worked out that much because when you have to cut through muscle and then you put in those implants, and I'm also very petite, um, and the implants that I got were quite big for my chest because I literally had no chest there before. It was extremely painful, so we'll just jump right back into that. I haven't made a video in a while because um, basically Skylar's been by my side this whole week and um, I just have needed a lot of help and definitely have not been in the mood to film myself. So I have on my lovely bra that they give you. I actually we went yesterday to Forever 21 and bought a couple of front zip ones because this one was so uncomfortable. And literally we took a bus there and back and I walked maybe four blocks and I slept the rest of the day because I was so exhausted from that. I'm trying to wean myself off of all the drugs but I definitely noticed that when I take them everything is a lot easier to handle. It's been a lot more um, uncomfortable than I thought it would be in terms of just like having to lie down all the time. My back is just killing me, my lower back. I can't lift my arms still. It's really sore all underneath my arms. Um, my incision areas are very sore. Um, everything is so swollen and so tight that my skin feels like it's just pulling like obviously it is and it's just really uncomfortable i've had some visitors over in the last few days and um was still taking oxys and t3s and all that so i was kind of in pretty good spirits when i had company but when i started to, to try and stay off of those drugs starting yesterday i was a lot it was a lot more challenging to just be and like sit or stand or anything. So we we had a shower yesterday. Well, Skylar helped me and looked at them for the first time without a bra on, and it was a little terrifying. They look like literally like torpedoes. They're just sticking straight out and hard as rocks and like spread apart, <laughs> and it's kind of scary. So I just thankfully did enough research ahead of time to know that that's to be expected and that they're going to like drop and get softer and look better with time. I know lots of girls when I've watched videos and stuff of their vlogs say that they already wish they went bigger and they could have gone bigger and that they're sad that they're like getting smaller and they don't look as big and I'm of the opposite right now. It's just like they're huge and I keep telling myself that they're going to, the swelling's going to go down, that they're going to go down. Still just trying to be patient and every day they do look a little better and feel a little better, but they still are not close to um, where I would want them to be yet. So I'm just going to have to wait and see. Okay. Thanks. Actually, when looking back at this footage, I thought it was kind of funny because after every single time I videoed something, I would say at the end, 
I'm sure in another few days it's gonna be better. I'm sure in another few months it's gonna be better. And... And... Thankfully, like I said before, I had Skylar to help me with a lot of things, including making me food, helping me go to the bathroom, basically wipe my butt. And we'd only been dating for like four or five months. And eventually they had to help me shower. And let me tell you, the first time that I took that medical bra off that you're gonna see in this next clip, it was like horrifying. Horrifying. Me and Skylar called them Franken boobs. I mean, not right away because I would have burst into tears, but later on when we could laugh about it. But uh, yeah, I'll just let my previous self explain. Here's the horrible bra that I have to wear and it's really uncomfortable. Um, they don't look as bad on the camera as they do in real life and feel. Um, I've been looking up a lot of trying to find out about like bodybuilders and like fitness athletes that may have gotten, um, augmentations because there's just not as much out there for women that have really, um, developed chest muscles and I feel like that's very specific to my situation right now. They're very, very hard. They're very, very swollen. They are like absolutely hard as rock. They're so uncomfortable. Feels like I can't breathe. It's super tight. When I push on them, they feel like just like balloons full of like sand. <laughs> They're sticking out of my sides. They're going up into my armpits. Last night when I tried to sleep it almost like went right back into my arm on this side and felt like, like my nerve was being pinched and my arm I couldn't move it and that was not fun I've tried to stay off the pain meds um, since a couple days ago but was taking extra strength Tylenol and then today I caved and took a t3 after the doctors because he also showed me basically told me all the pain that I'm feeling is normal that I had like this thick of muscle to cut through and that now I have to start moving and I've been babying myself this whole time and getting Skylar to do everything from like tie my shoes to carry my coffee cup and now Skylar's like well it looks like you can do it yourself <laughs> so um, apparently I'm allowed to do all those things and be moving and I have to like practice stretching my arm up over my head which is very painful and feels like it's pulling on the incisions underneath but he the doctor swore that they're fine and that I can do this. Um, he told me how to massage and like have to like push down, push in, and then push from the outside in. And they make squeaking noises when I do that. And it just feels completely foreign to my body. Nothing like anything I've seen on the videos in terms of day five. Like by now, everybody seems to just be in love with their chest and everything seems normal for me. I'm very uncomfortable. Does not feel like my own body right now at all. It's all, every, every area, it hurts. Everywhere I touch hurts. The sides really hurt. The bottoms, of course, hurt from the incisions. This all hurts because it's being pulled so tightly. There is not very much there. Like, this is crazy. Like, who has boobs that are up to here? That's not normal. <laughs> Ugh, so, yeah. This is, this is the part that I'm glad I didn't know about. That's what Sky keeps saying. Like, aren't you glad that you did not know about this until after? Because maybe if you knew, you wouldn't do it. And that's, you know, I probably still would have done it because I have a very high pain tolerance. But this is not what I expected in terms of, like, the process. Like, this is, it's very painful. It's very uncomfortable. It's very hard to just sit, let alone walk and stand and move and do anything. So... That is where I am at today. Okay, so now we're gonna jump into two weeks post-op and one of the more, it was already a bit traumatic, I'm not gonna lie to you, to see my Franken-boob situation in the shower, especially with Skylar because we were just starting dating. It's just not, it's not something you really want anyone to see. I wasn't even prepared to see like my my body to look that way. It was It was terrifying, it was traumatic. So then, Following that, I had, this is when things started to go wrong and quite often commonly go wrong, but people just don't talk about 
these little incidents that happen along the way that are very stressful and very scary. Once I got cleared to kind of start working out, I just wanted to do some light cardio, so I did that. I decided, me and Skylar just went to the gym and I just did some stuff on the treadmill or the step stair climber, I can't remember. And as I started sweating, I noticed that there was bleeding underneath my stitches. I wasn't sure if it was old blood or new blood and you know, anyway, so let's jump into it. Tomorrow is Monday, which would be two weeks post-surgery. Um, I haven't made a video in a while. Actually went back to work at the beginning of the week and went to the gym and I felt great, but then I got home and noticed that my bandages had soaked through um, we, me and Skylar weren't sure if this was old or new blood, and that was very scary. And we ended up, since it was after hours, calling a nurse hotline. And Skylar ended up rebandaging them for me and was amazing and kept me calm. And we went immediately to the doctors the following morning and just walked into the office because we couldn't get an appointment and had a nurse redress the dressings. And she even commented that Skylar had done an amazing job. So thanks, babe. Um, but... Just having the nurse look at them and say, you know, everything looks good made me feel a bit better. And once the dressings had been taken off, we could see that actually the incisions are closed for the most part. There's some stitches there, um, but they seem to be healing and everything's dropping. Um, they're still like up here, which is my collarbone is here and there's boob right there. So it's still, they're very high, they're out wide. I'm not 100% comfortable with them yet and how they look and how they feel and how I look with clothing on and everything, but I have gone out. I've just dressed a little bit more to just stay covered up because I'm not quite ready to like announce to the world. So now we're headed into one month post-op and definitely by this time I assumed I would be in love with my boobs, everything would be looking, feeling great, I would be showing them off to the world and just feeling really confident about my decision. And do you think that's how I felt? Well, let's just see. Um, next Monday is my four weeks. It's been stressful. To say the least, I feel on Skylar because I have looked to Sky for all kinds of support, emotional, like physical, like getting me in and out of bed, helping me with my massages, constantly talking about my boobs. <laughs> um, but Sky's been very um, understanding and incredible. And um, I can't believe, neither of us can believe that we're almost at the one month mark now. So update on how they feel. They are feeling a lot better, um, not still exactly um, what I want them to feel like, but it's just getting better every day at this point. They're still further out to the sides than I want, and I feel when I'm at the gym or anything, if I'm even just like holding myself up for a certain period of time that I feel these muscles are pulling. I'm still not feeling confident and comfortable with them. So I have, this is the, but like I'm wearing shirts like this. I'm not wearing anything low cut. I'm not, you know, wearing any outfits to show them off or anything because I don't feel comfortable with how they look and feel yet. So I feel in probably another month I will be there just kind of waiting patiently for everything to fall into place. Um, I'm still wearing the bra all the time. I'm wearing two bras to bed right now because the bra that I got, the surgical one, is actually stretched out so much that I don't feel like it's actually holding anything very tight. Um, I'm still trying to sleep on my back. Occasionally now I can roll to my side, but now again, I'm just cautious that I don't want to mess anything up. So that's it. I'll check in later. So after these kind of like medical trauma situations and stress, we thought it would be a good idea for me to just finally go to Victoria's Secret because trust me, if you watch all the boob vlogs out there on the internet, that's something that all the women do when they get their breast augmentation is they go bra shopping. It's supposed to be the super exciting, fun thing. Um, and again, just not for me. And I'm not trying to come across like 
this whole experience was negative, but definitely it's very, very scary. It's very, very stressful. And if you have a certain personality before you get the surgery done, you're gonna have that same personality most likely after the surgery. And I'm someone who's not very comfortable bra shopping, I don't really care. I always used to just wear sports bras and the bra shopping experience that I talk about in this next part, I literally still have those same two bras that I bought and I haven't bought anything else because I just hate it so much. So let me share with you my first bra shopping experience. I went to Victoria's Secret and La Senza this week in search of a bra, sports bra and regular bra, and I was measured by two different women in each store and told by both that was a 34B. So I was shocked and disappointed and confused, and I grabbed a bunch of 34Bs and went into the change room, and no, they did not fit. So then I felt like, okay, my boobs are going to be a 34B at some point, and they're just like weird and not they're sticking out too far and they're not settled or like what's going on and then I came home and looked up how to measure myself and when I measured myself I was a 32d 100% 32d so I was like okay so I went back to the store again today with Skylar and Skylar was a champ and just like found the 32ds everywhere we went I'd be like oh I can't find Skylar would be like found them found them found them so we pulled like six 32ds some 34Ds, some 34Cs, some even some Bs, just to like try everything. And 100% tried on a 32D, fit like a glove. So I feel like they're still huge and they look huge. And I just kind of have to accept that these are what they look like now. Anyways, so I am glad that uh, that is over and hopefully I can now go into stores. I'm going to try going back to Victoria's Secret next week in search of a sports bra. It's been a month. And so for me, it took this long to kind of be here. Some girls were like, oh my God, a week and they look great and they feel great. It was, it's been a long road for me. All right. So, so that long road that I'm, that I was on then, you know, honestly, it's been a long road for the last three years. And that's kind of more what I'm going to talk about in the final portion of this series. Just moving along, we're going to move into my three month check-in. And this, again, I hit some more hurdles with actual post-op recovery and healing that is somewhat talked about, but it's actually really fucking scary when it happens to you and your own body. So many things can go wrong when you get a breast augmentation, when you get any kind of plastic surgery, there are always risks and we always think that it's not gonna be us that has to deal with them. And of course, that was me as well. You just hope for the best. So when I actually was faced with the potential of having to get revisions, having problems with my surgery, having issues with what they were looking like and how they were healing, it was very scary and very stressful. And so let me just share with you the final portion of my old footage, which is my three month check in and my final one, I didn't really check in again after this. So in a few days, it will be my three month post op date. It's been quite the experience so far. Um, if you can't tell, I've been sick for about a week and haven't been working and been at home and Skylar has been taking care of me. So nothing related to my surgery, but definitely haven't been feeling well. So aside from that, um, before I went to see my doctor last, which was about two weeks ago, I started noticing some like lopsidedness. One was um, dropping a bit lower than the other. I know looking into it that that's quite common, and so I wasn't overly concerned. However, following that, I continued to notice just not abnormalities, but just um, that that one boob that continued to drop was also um, underneath the scar I was noticing which is generally supposed to be in the crease and is in the crease on the other side, was kind of rising up. So it wasn't sitting in the crease anymore. It was rising up here. And there's a thing called bottoming out, which um, can happen with breast implants where um, the capsule that the implant is in is not, or is too big, so the implant starts to slip down and then it can go underneath, which is terrifying. Skylar's amazing support. Um, they actually called the doctor's offices for me. We tracked down my surgeon we, just so that I could go see my surgeon to make sure that everything was okay because it was also now when I was lifting up my arms over my head, you could really see that there was something happening underneath. There was almost a line and a ridge 
and from the side it was almost like a dent and it was just not looking good and once you start looking on the internet at things it just makes it worse just the fact that one boob was smaller than the other when I started just naturally um, they're gonna look a little uneven no matter what and that's just boobs they're they're sisters not twins just like your eyebrows apparently so um, you can have them completely made even depending on what type of implant you get silicone versus saline I got silicone and so um, it just is what it is they're just gonna look a little different I, I was crying last night about it today when I saw the doctor I was crying in relief um, and it's just been a crazy day definitely feeling just emotional and I wanted to just really make these videos because if I do decide to share them at some point I think it's important that people know of the risks and the stress and that it's not all just you know I got these things put into my body and I'm great and bouncing around and back to regular life it can change in a heartbeat I was really concerned that I was going to need revisions and more surgery and it was going to affect all these plans that I've had for the spring and the summer and traveling and playing my sport and so it's just been a very stressful situation and again like I haven't told many of my family members or close people in my life about this surgery so I feel um, bad that I have to kind of put it all onto Skylar because they're the only one who really they're the only one that knows what I've done and knows how to comfort me and knows it can take care of me and but Skylar's been amazing and has never made me feel bad about it and I'm so so thankful and appreciate them so much really truly an angel <laughs> and I know I'm just gonna wait till six months to really judge what the situation is that they still are very high they don't feel very natural I'm still kind of uncomfortable with how they look when I have no clothes on um the scars are very still there, um, so it's just it's a process, and it's not always a breeze, so emotionally and physically. So this video is pretty long because of all the, the old footage that I wanted to share, but I really do hope that it has helped some of you out there that might have questions. There was a lot that I didn't know about the uglier side of the recovery and healing process that honestly, if I had known it, I would most likely have made a different decision. A lot of the boob vlogs out there kind of make it feel like it's a very simple basic surgery and it just you know you get them you have like a week or two off of work and boom you're back to regular life and it's just was not my experience at all i have a very high pain tolerance i have lots of tattoos lots of piercings and you know i've broken my leg before i've had severe concussions i had whiplash like i know what pain feels like and this was it was an exceptionally painful experience for quite a long time. So this is gonna wrap up part two of my boob vlog series. I'm gonna do one more. So if you have any questions that you want me to cover in my final video of this series, please comment them below. I will definitely include them. I do have some things I wanna speak about in terms of what my experience has been three years later, what kind of issues I'm dealing with now. I just really wanted to give you guys a chance to make the most informed decision you can about what you wanna to do to your body and what's worth it. Being someone who is very passionate about fitness working out, having real fitness goals, being someone that's involved in CrossFit and bodybuilding and things like that, or, or even if you play contact sports, what the realities are about having a breast augmentation. So thank you so much for tuning in. Like I said, comment below. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up, share it with your fellow women out there that might be considering this as an option for them and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and the notification bell because as you know i don't post regularly but i do post quite often and so when you if you want to see when my videos are coming out hit that bell and then you'll get notified so thanks again love you all see you in the next video